Hello, Miami. You're watching 305 Sports Now, your home podcast and channel for all things Miami sports related. I am Will. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. Hey everybody, welcome to 305 Sports Now. I told you guys, I told you guys I was going to make some changes, and I really do hope that you like the logo and the new intro video that I have provided for this program. I told you making some changes and give you feedback on what you think of the new logo and also the new intro video as well. I think it encompasses a bit of what this show is about. And um, another thing I want to say is also thank you to all of you. That's the first thing foremost. Thank you to Alex Dono for making the appearance uh, this past week on the show itself and his great insight and his time that he did, that he provided to the program. So very thankful for him and what he did. You know, and coming on and lo love locked on canes. Give it a watch. He gives he's very insightful and like he said, like he said on his show, he is a radio veteran of WQEM and of course of the uh, podcast atmosphere, etc. But the one thing I want to talk about is the absolute portal madness that has been occurring. Okay, so now we lost out on Cam Ward. Supposedly, uh, he hasn't yet hired an agent, so he may still be thinking things out. Even though he formally uh, said he wanted to declare for, declare for the NFL draft. On January 1st, we lost. We definitely lost out on Will Howard as he is committed to, you know, Ohio State. Malachi Nelson commits to Boise State as well. And uh, Caden Salter decided that he was going to stay over at Liberty. So the one thing that's been interesting is now is that there's always been a connection, a rumor about Talia Tagaviola, the quarterback out of out of Maryland, and also the younger brother of Dolphin quarterback Tua Tagaviola, possibly coming to Miami to play closer to his brother since they are su such a tight knit family. And that happens to there the wheels of that happen to be moving, okay? As Tua, I'm sorry, Talia, Talia, excuse me, I'm just saying Tua all the time because um, you know the Dolphins. Talia, <clears throat> who was out of eligibility, you know, has formally declared, you know, entering the transfer portal. Um, yet the NCAA itself has not given him the waiver to enter the uh, to go to a team. This is probably the process that he wants to go through, so he's able to, you know. Be able to once he's approved enter the portal get picked up by by a team etc um so just a little bit about talia uh, he's a bit on the shorter side though um i think like my quarterback's a little bit taller but he's you know he's he's proven capable and competent he's 511 208 something i've always said is that miami just needs a very competent quarterback all right and um and he pretty much uh well actually one of, before i keep going donald brought us up one of the main reasons why he's out of eligibility is because nick saban in probably in junk time, uh, burn his red shirt. Okay, he played in very minimal games his freshman year at Alabama. He went from Alabama to Maryland, and he played in a handful of games, very little time, burned his red shirt, burned his red shirt, and that's why right now he's arguing and trying to get a waiver for eligibility, you know, for this upcoming football season, the 2024 football season. And uh, so just a little bit about him, his season stats for this year, okay, uh, 3,377 yards, 25 touchdowns, 11 intercepts, interceptions, and 66.4% completion percentage. He is the all-time leader in passing for Maryland, as these are his career stats, as you'll see on the graphic. 11,356 yards, 77 touchdowns, 37 interceptions, and 67.7% completion percentage. Okay, so I want to give you my perspective on Talia. Um, I do agree with Dono. He does check a lot of the boxes that is needed, you know, at, I believe at the quarterback position for the Canes. He checks off the box with experience. He checks off the box that he'd be a stopgap quarterback for someone like Ja'Cory Brown, Emery Williams, Judd Anderson, and even Luke Nickel, who's coming in in 2025 class. Hopefully he's coming in at 2025 class as well. Uh, he, he is accurate, okay? He is accurate. He has that in common with his brother. He's accurate with the deep ball. He's accurate with the intermediate, intermediate routes. He's accurate when throwing the ball the ball out to the flats and so on. He could also throw on the run as well. He's deceptively athletic in the sense that he could get out of situations where if he needs to run for first down, he'll be able to do so. He won't be afraid, you know, in RPO situations to um, 
not give the ball over to the running back, pull it, and be able to run for first down or get additional yardage or run into the end zone. He's not afraid to do that. Something that Tyler Van Dyke was really hesitant in doing quite a bit. In many occasions where he could have pulled the ball, he decided not to pull the ball, and it ended up you know, not working out for the Canes. That won't be a problem with Talia because Talia will pull the ball and be able to run for additional yardage you know, as well. Goes to progressions. Zone defense is not a weakness for Talia. Zone, um, he could expose zone defense, and the fact that he is able to scramble out of situations, he could actually affect the zone in which it'll, ha it'll have to create somewhat of a spy or a defensive back may have to come out of position or a linebacker or a safety to try to make the tackle or try to disrupt you know, the passing lane for him. That kind of will mess up the zone a little bit as well. Um, my only thing about Talia, and this is just from watching video, I, I looked at about three football games you know, today, uh, before I did this podcast, and uh, I did two Rutgers games and the Michigan games. And one thing about Talia, his brother does that a little bit, not as much as before, is that he may hold on to the ball a little bit too long, and that's where he might lead to sacks. Okay, but he he does get, get, the, get rid of the ball with quickness. He has a quick release just like Tua, uh, but he will hold on to the ball from what I saw, and that could lead to some sacks. But, uh, you know, he will have a much better, more competent, and more... Uh, organized offensive line this year than he had over at Maryland that will give him a little bit more time to be able to go more through his progression. So that's one. Another thing I don't like is the turnover issue. Talia does uh, does turn over the ball. He will have he will throw his fair of, fair share of interceptions for every two touchdowns by average. For every two touchdowns, he'll give you he'll give you one pick per game. So that's something that was a problem with Tyler Van Dyke and did cost us some games. Hopefully, if he does become a Miami Hurricane, I do believe and I I'm saying this right now. If um if the NCAA does grant that waiver, I do believe Talia will be a cane. I don't see I don't see why he wouldn't be. His brother's down here, you know, his brother's down here. His family will love to see him play, you know, as well. So it'll be a lot easier to watch, you know, Talia and Tua when they're playing in the same stadium than when one's in another state and, and another one's in another state. So that would be very ideal for the uh, Tagaviola family as well. They're very close, right? That is a very close family, and I'm sure they will love to see Tua and Talia in the same city. That would be very fun and very interesting, you know, as well. Um, just a, so that, But I, yeah, I am concerned about the turnovers. I've heard a lot of that on X, and I've heard a lot of that in the comment sections, you know, locked on Canes and so on. That is a concern I do have as well. As long as it, he doesn't throw you out of games, okay, he doesn't throw you out of games, that shouldn't be an issue. Miami's offense under under Sh Shannon Dawson should be better this year. Usually the second year of a coordinator, that's when you see more offensive improvements, both in the running game and the passing game. I.e. example, this year with the Dolphins, Mike McDaniel's offense last year was very explosive. One of the biggest criticisms of McDaniel's offense last year is that he abandoned the running game a little too early at times. That has not been an issue this year as the Dolphins are dominant, both in passing and also in rushing the football, i.e., the 22 plus touchdowns that Raheem Mostert has, okay, and and the contributions of a Chan for the running back position, both as a pass catcher and also you know running the football as well. So I expect I expect to see a little bit of the same, you know, with Shannon Dawson. I will say this though, I will say this though, though I have been very hard on Josh Gaddis. I'm saying this is Josh Gaddis was the OC last year for Maryland. I have been very hard on Josh Gaddis. Somebody have told me to you know I'm very hard on Josh Gaddis, and. And rightfully so, the offense was terrible under Gaddis. But the will, the one thing I will say about Gaddis is that Gaddis did use every single aspect of his offense. What I mean by that is he did use his tight ends. Well, Mallory caught a few balls, and he did use his running backs. As Henry Parrish uh, was able to catch some footballs out out in the backfield when Josh Gaddis was here for his first season, for the first season of the Mario Cristobal era. So that being said, why am I saying this? If you look at the video of two of Talia, sorry, of Talia this past season, it was a lot of checkdowns to the running backs. There were some screens being thrown to the running backs and the tight ends as well. That is something that Talia is very well is very good at checking the ball down and also utilizing the screen. He's very deceptive and he allows his guys, you know, to be able to create enough space where they can run the where they can toss the ball to the running back or the receiver, whomever it may be, to be able to get some yards, you know, after the catch through the screen pass. So. Shannon Dawson, if Talia does come to the to the Hurricanes, he's going to have to draw up some some screens, something that was not in the Dolph in the Hurricane offense last season. Okay, it was not really. We didn't see much much from the tight ends and the running backs until the Boston College game. All right, 
Although the offensive numbers under Dawson were much better in terms of wide receiver production and running the football than they were the previous season under, under Josh Gaddis, the, the criticisms of the, of the underutilization of the running backs in the passing game and the tight ends as well is, is, well, is, is well suited to Shannon Dawson. So if Talia does come in, if Talia, if they do grant that waiver, if he is our quarterback, or whomever, or whomever, if it's the Albany kid that people are talking about as well, the utilization of the running back and the tight ends as a weapon in this offense needs to be a priority for next season because right now the offense does look predictable and you they already got film on you. All right. So there has to be a tweak to this offense. And I do believe in initiating the screen to the running back and using the tight end as a, as a security blanket, which you have some beasts at the tight end position and Riley Williams and Elijah Lofton as well. And Jackson Carver, let's not forget him either. Uh, you, uh, you, the sky's the limit for this offense, all right? Especially with the young guys coming in as well at wide receiver. The sky's the limit. This offense has so much potential to be explosive. All it needs is the right signal caller, and it needs to use every aspect of its of its capabilities in the running game and the passing game as well. And as far as the transfer portal goes, as far as the eligibility aspect of things, I know due to COVID, there were some guys that are able to play multiple years, like six, seven years, i.e. Cam McCormick, that Donald jokingly has said uh, has said he could collect Social Security. All right, maybe not Donald. Somebody else might have said that. I don't remember. But there have been jokes about his age, all right? Um, I don't see a, a bad idea of Talia getting a waiver, especially since he was shortchanged uh, by, by Nick Saban his first season. Even though it may open Pandora's box a little bit where you get, you know, not even graduate transfers getting an extra year. Um, basically, guys have graduated altogether uh, getting an extra year. Um I do think, well, actually, when you grad transfer, you, you've already graduated. So I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking here. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is that, listen, every everybody has a farm system. Everybody has a farm. A major league baseball has a farm system. The NBA has its leagues and so on for developmental players. Let's be honest. College football, the NCAA, that's a farm system for the NFL. Okay, so if uh, if a young man feels that he may need another year of college uh, to hone his skills. And because of, let's say, a coaching change that happened uh, during his tenure at whatever school it may be, if they, if they, if that individual feels they made it an extra year, I think that's, I think that's okay. Not two or three, but I think one extra year to improve your draft stock, to make a little bit more money in, on NIL, and then later on make a bit more money in the NFL. I don't think that's such a bad, a bad thing. So I do hope Talia gets his waiver, whether he plays for the Canes or not. But I do believe that if he does get his waiver, get ready because we're going to have the Taco Violas you're right, at quarterback, both collegially and in the NFL. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you heard, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to Real Five Sports now. Once again, I will say safe. God bless you soon. And just to let you know, I have not forgotten about the Dolphins. All right, I am trying to work on uh, bringing in some people uh, that uh, to talk about the Fins, all right, as far as their playoff push goes and the season goes as well. All right, everybody, stay safe. God bless you soon. Go Canes and go Fins. Bye-bye, guys.